Security Aurora products also provide an post layout analysis environment for checking the signal distribution for impedance discontinuities in designs. In this video, we are going to simulate our designs for impedance discontinuities. So let's get started. In the very first step, we are going to open the board file in Security Aurora 17.4. So let's open that and select Security Aurora 2 or Security Aurora license from here and click on OK. To open the board file, you can click over File, Open, locate where you have saved it and open it. In your case, you can download the board file from the link given in the description. Alright, after opening the board file, we are going to set up analysis workflow for impedance discontinuity simulation. If it is not open in your case, you can go to analyze in the top menu and click on workflow manager. Once it is open, we are going to select impedance workflow from the analysis workflow drop down menu. Now it's time to select net groups you wanted to simulate. To do that, click on select nets link from workflow and net selection window will open. In the net selection window, first we are going to change view from flat view to hierarchical view and then scroll down to select all the 64 data buses. After moving 64 data buses from all the nets to selected nets, click over apply and OK. Now we are good to go for running the simulation. To do that, click on start analysis from workflow. Once the simulation is done, which you can verify by the check mark next to it, we are going to view the impedance table. To do that, we'll go to view impedance table link from the workflow manager and just click over here. And once the tables are open, we'll sort the impedance in decreasing order. To do that, you have to double click over max. And here we go. Here we can clearly see the parallel data bus 15 has maximum impedance 77.3, which is a clear impedance discontinuity on the data bus. All right, in the next step, we needed to find out which part of the parallel data bus 15 causing the impedance discontinuity. Because the whole bus will not have impedance discontinuity, there will be a particular segment which is causing this issue due to plane cutouts or other issues. To find out that impedance discontinuity segment, we have to select parallel data bus from the summary table and sort the detailed table from increasing to decreasing order. Once you do that, we can see there are a couple of impedance discontinuities. To find the source of these impedance discontinuities, we'll just double click here and it will direct us to this section. Now here we can clearly see these are the particular track which can have the problem, but all the planes are hidden as of now. We are just going to enable those planes. For that, go to visibility and enable L5 power plane. Here we go. So as you can see, the source of impedance discontinuities was plane cutout. Apart from that, there is impedance vision feature as well, which will help us to visualize impedance discontinuities based on color segment. To run this, you have to click over view impedance vision link from the workflow manager. And as you can see, it will highlight the segment which has impedance discontinuities. So it will be easy to find out if we are routing very complex or packed design. There is one more way to simulate for impedance discontinuity and that is directed group simulations. Directed group simulation is nothing. It will simulate all the tracks or all the connections together between two components. To do that, you have to select analysis mode from net base to directed group. Then click over select directed group. And here we have to mark start component and end component. In our case, start component is U7 and end component is XU2. Once we have done that, we have to click over create button and it will create the directed group. Now before applying or click over OK button, we are going to uncheck differential and point to point simulation. We are going to simulate for single ended and multi point analysis. Then click over apply and OK. And then in the next step, we have to run the simulation by clicking over start analysis option. After running the simulation, we have to select directed group from the view mode and then click over view impedance plots. Alright, so here we have all the list of nets or connections between the component which are FPGA controller and demodule connector. In this case, I just wanted to demonstrate few nets. For example, I'm just going to apply a filter for parallel bus. 
underscore data so i'm just going to demonstrate for these many nets and once the filter is applied you have to click over restore net filtered on plot here we go so as of now we are just observing the 11 results out of 121 active nets and here we can clearly see this red marker denotes the impedance discontinuity let's suppose I wanted to see where is this impedance discontinuity. So if you just select there, we'll get all the information about this discontinuity by just hovering our cursor there. And if we'll double click on this one, it will zoom into the location of that particular track segment, which has impedance discontinuity. So these are the couple of ways using which we can simulate multiple nets together, either directed group method or selected net method. Similarly, you can plot for a scattered group. So this will be the plot between impedance and the length of the transmission line or connections. So we can see this impedance is more than 72. All right. So that's it for this video. In the next step, you can just save the project file. I would suggest just play along with the values and find out more impedance discontinuities. For more tutorials, visit us at resources.emaeda.com and don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube channel.